Hello and welcome to our environment control webinar. My name's Emma and I work for Smartbox and I'm going to be going through um, how you can use Grid3 to control the devices around you and give you a bit of a tour of the key features to get you started. Rob from our support team will be answering any questions you have during the session. So if you do have any questions, please just pop them in the chat feed um, and he can answer those or pass them through to me. Environment control works by sending signals via a transmitter, such as the ones in your grid pad, to a receiver such as your television or a compatible socket, which can have a lamp, a fan, or any device that can be plugged in to that socket. If you don't have a communication aid with environmental control, you can purchase transmitters. If you need more help with that, we will give you details at the end of the webinar. So let's have a look at Grid3. Grid3 is a complete AAC solution that helps people communicate with symbols or text, as well as control their environment. It's compatible with a number of commonly used environment control transmitters, which we can look at later, that will help you control things such as your lamps and your TV. Today we're going to look at a couple of grid sets in Grid3 for using environment control. Our environment control grid sets are designed for both literate and symbol users. As with the rest of Grid3, they can be used with all access methods such as touch, switch, eye gaze or pointer. This page that we're on now, this blue page, is what we call Grid Explorer and it's your home page where you can find all of your grid sets in Grid3. If you added an environment control when you first made your user, you'll see the simple service environment control grid set and the service environment control grid set. If you didn't add them in when you created your user, you can do so by going to Menu, Add Grid Sets, Service Environment Control, and then you'll see our three environment control grid sets. Okay, and then you can select one and add it should you need to. The grid sets we're focusing on are Simple Server, Service Environment Control and Amazon Echo. The main difference between Simple Service Environment Control and Service Environment Control is the cell size and the amount of cells. If we look at Simple Service, you'll see television, the power and the volume and the channel are your only options and they're quite large, so it's quite a simple grid set. You'll see for the regular service environment control grid set, the cells are a little bit smaller and we've got more options here. It's worth noting that a lot of the features that we're covering today can also be find, found inside the Fast Talker grid set which is an all-in-one solution for literate users. We're doing um, a webinar all about Fast Talker, so if you're interested in that, look out for that on the website. Grid3 supports a few different transmitters. If we go to transmitters and add, you'll see a whole list of different transmitters. But the ones we're going to focus on today, because they're the ones that are inside a grid pad, are the Easy Wave Transmitter, which is Radio Wave, and the Gaver, which is Infrared. So we're going to start by setting up an infrared accessory, and we're going to talk you through how to do that. So, so you're able to see We've done a video. So first of all, we need to go to the menu. We then need to go to settings. 
and then we can go to environment control. We're just going to double check that the GAVA IR transmitter is detected. And as you can see under transmitters, it's listed there. That's perfect. The accessory we're going to add today is a television. So we're going to choose television out of the list of templates. And as you can see here, it gives us an option to name it. So we're going to do that in case in the future we decide to add any more television so we can distinguish between the two. So I'm going to name it after the room that this television is in. I'm going to check that it's selected to use the GAVA transmitter. And then I'm going to start to learn it. So I'm going to select the first option, which is the power button. I'm going to select learn. I'm going to pick up my remote and it's telling me to point my remote at the top left corner where that light's shining and it's telling me to hold the button and point it there now telling me to release and press and release it so just following the instructions you can see once it's recorded that signal it's going to turn green i'm now going to test that and make sure that it works with my tv So when I select transmit, it's going to send the signal as you can see my television's turning on. So it sent the signal from my grid pad to the TV. And it turns on and then I'm just going to test that it turns off. So I'm going to set transmit now again and you can see that it turns off. I'm now going to continue to go the whole way through the remote recording the rest of the buttons. Once I've done that, I can test it in the grid set. So to test it in my grid set, I'm going to find the grid set, select television as that's what I've recorded it as, and I'm going to press some of the buttons in my grid set to ensure that it turns on my television. As you can see, it also works directly in the grid set and I'm going to turn it off again. Once I've set up my environment control accessory, I might want to add some more. It is worth checking our website as we do have a number of IR accessories already recorded and available to download and use from our website. So to access those, we go to a web browser. We navigate to thinksmartbox.com. If you search pre for pre-recorded, you'll see it come up, pre-recorded IR remote files for environment control. And on that page, you'll see there's lots of different accessories for you to download. So televisions, smart TV boxes, DVD and Blu-ray players, uh, music players, um, landline phones that work with infrared. Um, and all you need to do is download one of those um, and then save it in this location on your device. And then if you restart Grid 3, those accessories will automatically appear for you ready to use in your accessories folder. It's important to note that the ones with the blue ticks are your defaults. So when you go to the grid set, the default is the one that it will work with. So when I open my environment control grid set and go to my set top box page, it will automatically work with my Sky Plus HD. TV. Okay, so now let's look at setting up a radio frequency device. So as I said, we use LDAP in our grid pads and that's what we're going to look at today. Let's look at the video. So we're going to set it up starting with the same method. So we go to menu and then we go to our settings. 
we go to the environment control tab then we go to transmitters and we're using the EasyWave LDAP transmitter we select it and select configure we're going to ensure that it's detected by pressing detect and that will show up the transmitter and we're going to choose a button to record it on and I'm going to rename this button so I know that that's the one that I've set up. Once I've renamed it, I'm ready to learn. So I'm going to put my socket into learning mode by just pressing the button once and you'll see it flash. Then I'm going to select transmit A on my grid pad in grid three. And then I'm going to press it three times to take it out of learning mode. When it's out of learning mode, I can test it by transmitting that signal and the fan turns on. Automatically, if I've learned A, it knows that transmit B turns the device off. So once we've done that, we're going to set up an accessory and we're remembering it's a socket this time. So we're going to select the socket accessory. We're going to name it again so we know which one it is. So I'm going to call this one fan. I'm going to ensure it's using the right transmitter. So we're using the EasyWave LDAP transmitter. So I'm going to select that from the list. And then on, I'm going to choose from the list. Fan transmit A is on. That's what we set it up as. And then for off, we're going to choose fan transmit B. Once we've done that, we can press OK. You can see the uh, accessory is there now. And I'm going to go into my grid set and I'm going to test it. Go to home, go to fan. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to turn it off. That's a very simple way of setting up um, an LDAP plug socket. You can also set up an LDAP alarm in a very, very similar manner. We're now going to move on to the Amazon Echo grid set. This grid set is set to speak directly with the Amazon Echo. So it's programmed with a series of phrases that will ask Alexa to do certain things for you, such as tell you a joke. Alexa, tell us a joke. Play music. Alexa, play a song. Taylor Swift. Or turn your bedroom lamp on. Alexa, turn on bedroom lamp. All of the options along the top are different categories of things that you can ask Alexa to do. If you select any of them, you'll very quickly see that you can actually add your own options so we can quickly customise um, things that we want her to do. We don't need to type in um, Alexa, we just need to type the radio station that we like. Sunshine. Then we're going to select add and choose a place for that to go. Then when we select it, Alexa, play Sunshine Radio. And it's automatically added Alexa in for us. And that's the same for any of the categories that you choose in the Alexa grid set. Some initial setup is required with the Alexa, and that includes actually having the Amazon Alexa. 
um, setting up your default music streaming system, whether that's Spotify or um, Amazon's own, um, buying your heart, uh, your smart home devices and setting those up, and then choosing what uh, flash briefing you're having, so whether that's BBC or Sky. But once that's done, this grid set tends to work seamlessly with Alexa. That brings us to the end of our environment control webinar. I hope it's given you a good overview of how it works and how to set things up. There's lots of helpful articles to get you started with environment control on our website and we'll send out those links with the recording of this webinar. Um, it's important to know um, Grid3 has the capability to do environment control if you have the hardware. Um, so our current grid pad range all have um, um, the GAVA for uh, infrared and either the easy wave or the Z wave for your radio frequency. If you don't have a grid pad with environment control, you can buy the, the transmitters to set those up yourself. If you need any help with that, feel free to contact us. Um, we've got five minutes for questions, um, which we can ask now, or you can also contact us. So to contact us for any help or any questions, um, I'm going to be around on the Smartbox community for the next hour or so. Um, if you search Facebook for Smartbox community, feel free to ask any questions you might have on there. Um, or equally, if you want to contact our support team with any questions, it's um, support at thinksmartbox.com that's support at thinksmartbox.com um, so we've got five minutes for some questions I think we've had a few come in um, so one of those was um, is there a Google home grid set so you might have seen that I had one there we've talked about the Alexa but some people have the Google home that's available on online grids. You can add that by going to menu, add grid set, online grids. And if you search Google Home, you can see it there to add in. Okay. Um, it works in exactly the same way as the Alexa uh, grid set. It's got your categories down the left hand side um, and then the option to add and remove um, and add any categories, add any commands that you want to ask the Google Home. Okay. We've had another question about whether it works with blinds. Um, you have a few different options. There are um, infrared blinds that you can purchase. So it's a matter of learning the remote like we have today. Um, once the blinds have been fitted, obviously. Um, and then we also have the LDAP has what we call um, a relay. So you have an LDAP relay that works with our transmitter and you can have those fitted. Um, if you want to know more about that, feel free to contact us on Facebook Smartbox Community. Um, or again, contact the Smartbox support team and we can send you those details. It's support at thinksmartbox.com. Um, I'd like to thank you for, um, for, for watching this webinar today. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Um, thanks for your time.